it's a very primal fear. Being in a small space that's filled with water horrifies some people. Claustrophobia? Deep, dark it's place. It's a deep, dark place. <laughs> Dr. Andrew Pitkin and his colleague, Brett Hemphill, dive Florida's vast network of underground caves, mapping and exploring spots that few have ever been to, and even fewer would care to go. Some divers would look at that and go, you guys are just crazy. To fight the current, divers use underwater scooters that allow them to swim for miles. Some caves run as deep as 400 feet, with passages so narrow, the divers can barely squeeze through. It might be like somebody who's, you know, free climbing El Capitan in Yosemite, as opposed to somebody who's just going for a hike, you know, and looking at the nice scenery in terms of the logistics and the, the effort and the level of experience involved. Eagle's Nest in southwest Florida is often described as the Mount Everest of cave diving. It's very easy to get deep quick, which also adds to the potential potential danger for this site. A placid pond on the surface, it plunges 200 feet before branching out into narrow and complicated tentacles. It has earned a reputation for lethality, a fact reflected in signs above the surface and below. There should be no misinterpretation of that. The signs say that no in certain terms, the, the, they will they will not come out alive. Such was the case in October, says Hernando County Sheriff Al Nienheis. Two experienced divers went in, both failed to surface. Like many sports, very dangerous. And if you make one mistake, it can have very uh, tragic consequences. He got stuck in this restriction right here. When the bodies were found, only one diver was wearing his underwater breathing unit called a rebreather. We do know he got stuck. He got stuck so badly that at some point he decided it would be advantageous to remove all of his equipment and literally left it laying in the dirt completely intact, completely functioning. The divers made it nearly two-thirds of the way back, sharing a single breathing apparatus. But air and distance weren't the only challenges. When he decided to, to, to ditch his equipment, he became hopelessly buoyant. Literally had to make his way across the ceiling. They were the ninth and tenth divers known to have died at Eagle's Nest. And just four days after we visited, another death, the 11th. Because the caves are so dangerous, the job of recovering those bodies falls to people like Brett. It doesn't really affect you until you get home and you go to bed and you wake up and you see your kids the next day or you, and, and, and then you reflect. For me, it's helped me. I don't want to be that person. The risks, while real, aren't enough to counter the pull of discovery. The whole sensation of being where nobody has been before. There's a real uh, personal sense of accomplishment. We're pushing ourselves mentally and physically, but we're also discovering something as we move forward. The team has mapped dozens of miles of previously unexplored cave. And doing some spectacular video so you can see the karst aquifer we live on. They hope the information and the beauty of the caves helps build respect for the value and fragility of the Floridan aquifer, the state's prime drinking water resource. It's an amazing place. In the world we live in, truly the best way to protect something is to document it.